Welcome to the rocket profile of the N-1, the Soviet Union's attempt to launch humans to the moon. The first stage of the N-1, also known as Block A, had 30 NK-15 engines burning kerosene and oxygen arrayed in a 17-meter base with a center ring of 6 and an outer ring of 24. Each engine provided 1,680 kN of vacuum thrust, which is around 1,500 kN at sea level. The NK-15 was 10% more efficient than the F-1 engine used on the Saturn V with a sea level specific impulse of 297 seconds and 331 seconds in vacuum. The stage was meant to burn for 2 minutes and 5 seconds. The N-1 faced 4 failures and no payloads delivered successfully to orbit. The first failure was an engine fire at 12 kilometers, the second was an explosion on the launch pad, the third was due to bad roll control resulting in destruction 51 seconds after launch, and the last reached engine cutoff at 40 kilometers, but the shutdown of the engines ruptured the fuel system which destroyed the vehicle. A major contributing factor to the failures was that the first stage was not properly tested for vibrations, and the complexity of the first stage meant that there were severe vibrations much more intense than the pogo oscillations in the Saturn V. There you see the second stage, named the Block B, which consists of eight vacuum versions of the NK-15, the NK-15V, with 1755 kilonewtons of thrust and a 346 second specific impulse. It does hot stage, which means that it lights while the first stage is still burning, and then separates. I was uncertain about the timing of the launch tower jettison on this rocket and just added it to the test payload. The third stage was the Block B and featured four NK-21 engines, each with a thrust of 402.5 kN, burning for 6 minutes and 10 seconds. While the first stage was more efficient than that of the Saturn V, the use of kerosene and oxygen on the second and third stage instead of hydrogen oxygen on the Saturn V meant that the N1 was about 20% less efficient here, and ultimately its payload to orbit was 95 tons. The question that most often arises about the N1 is, why 30 small engines instead of 5 big engines like the Saturn V in the first stage? The reason was the bad relationship between the chief Soviet rocket designer, Sergei Korolev, and the chief engine designer, Valentin Glushko. They had disagreements about the fuel type to be used, and also accusations by Glushko had led Korolev to be tortured and put into the Gulag in Siberia for a time. The ill will led Korolev to turn to Kuznetsov, who primarily designed aircraft engines. The resulting NK-15s and NK-15Vs were good engines and have subsequently been used on many rockets in their more reliable forms, the NK-33 and NK-43, but the complicated fuel system certainly caused problems for the N-1 in form of destructive vibrations and oscillations. Perhaps more critical to the N-1's fate was the fact that its designer, Korolev, died in January 1966, three years before the first test launch. If it were to successfully get to orbit, the N-1 would have moved on to its fourth stage, the Block G, which consisted of a single NK-19, which would begin its way to the moon. The NK-19 was related to the NK-21s in the third stage. It also burns kerosene and oxygen, and does so for 7 minutes and 23 seconds. Thank you for watching this rocket profile of the N1.